this video is just a little bit different from normal. Um, I had a phone call from my mother yesterday saying that she'd rescued uh, this young bird. Um, its siblings unfortunately been taken by a cat and it's left the nest far too early to be able to fly. Um, so I've undertaken the job, well me and Lynn, <laughs> I've undertaken the job of trying to uh, help it. Now I've spoke to a lady who is an expert on this today, um, Linda, thank you very much, and she's advised me that it's a very, very, very tr tricky bird, but we're going to give it a go, got to at least try. So yeah, it's a swift. Um, I've sent a photograph to um, Linda and she said uh, it looks to be about 25 to 26 days old. And there you can see the swift is taken to this little block I've made with the indentation and it'll spend the night there. So I've placed it in a, a plastic bin that I've uh, disinfected and cleaned out and I need to do that every day. I did try ringing yesterday once I picked the swift up one or two local wildlife centres to see whether they could help but nobody answered the phone and Linda who I rang who lives in Leeds was brilliantly helpful really really good but she's already got 22 swifts that she's looking after and couldn't really take any more so I was going to drive to Leeds and take it to her um, when the weather's warm like this she was saying that they get an explosion of young swifts because again they start to overheat in the roofs of buildings and sort of clamber to the entrance um, to try and get a bit of fresh air and cool off. Inevitably sometimes some of them fall out or force each other out and I think that's what's happened in this case. So it's taken one feed this morning, two last night. Feeding is difficult, it will not take the food of its own accord. Um, and that's what makes swifts very, very difficult to hand rear. Um, so you, you kind of have to force feed it, which isn't pleasant. It's, it's not something I'm enjoying doing, but at least it's eating. So it's now day seven of looking after this young swift. Um, it's hard work, it is hard work. Seven, eight, nine feeds a day sometimes, but doing well. Um, not waited today or measured the wings today, but yesterday, she was, or he, I keep calling her she for some reason, um, had 124 wing, so that's grown quite a lot, and she's put on three grams um, in weight. She still needs to put about another eight to ten on before she'll be uh, a good weight to release. I think, I think we'll be looking Thursday, Friday, maybe next weekend before we can release her. So there's another five or six days to go yet. So this is where Lynn's wrapping it up in a piece of tissue and it just holds it steady when you're feeding it. And it helps protect the feathers from spillage. She's doing a good job. And we've just come up with this method of inserting it into a toilet roll tube. And if she's put a bit more weight on, she's now 40 grams. Oh, there you go. That's one of the benefits of hands feeding. Yeah, so she's now 40 grams. Her wings are up to 140 millimetres, which I measure using the ruler I use for bird ringing. So, it's day 13 and she's putting on weight, she's doing all right. I've not weighed her today, but the plan is for release tomorrow. Um, so we've got two more feeds. Got lovely, you can see them or not, crickets. 
and some wax worms before the big release tomorrow, which obviously I will film, hopefully. We've got his fingers and his legs and his whatever else we can cross crossed. Hoping that she's going to be able to fly and take off. Her wings are looking really strong. She's very alert. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see what happens. It's release day. 1st of August. 14 days we've been looking after this swift. So I've come down to a local nature reserve. I found my launch pad. Oh, it's got a bit of a drop. So at least it's got a chance to get some wind under its wings. Now I'm not normally one for naming wild animals, but after much discussion with every family member I've got that's been trying to come up with silly names, I mentioned one name and everybody said absolutely. And this is in memory of a young chap that's been taken from us far too early. And I hope this is okay with you, John. We'll call it Max. So I'm going to go and give it one last feed and then Lynn's going to go down the bottom of that hill and film the release. Yeah, that's it. I'm very, very emotional. I'm hoping you got to see that on camera. First couple of yards, I thought, oh no, it's going down. But then it found a back, of course, it naturally too, didn't it? And it flew off low over the grass and then slowly started to gain height. Went up over the trees and followed the train line south. <laughs> and if it follows that train line, straight to London. Keep going. What a result. What an absolutely fantastic result. Go on, Max. Anyway, I've no idea whether this video's worked or not. I'm too emotional through the whole thing. It's been hard work, but so, so rewarding see that bird fly off after two weeks of looking after it. <sighs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> keep an eye out. If you live down south from Derbyshire, keep an eye out for this fantastic Swift Corn Max. <sighs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Ta-da.